Well, <clears throat> good morning. It's uh, Thursday morning. Uh, sitting out here in the garden, it's uh, a nice day. Thought I'd say a wee bit more about being a, a wounded healer. Um, that's a phrase that has um, sort of worked its way into common vocabulary. But I think perhaps there's a uh, little understanding of uh, what is meant by that. Let me pick up uh, where I left off in my previous blog. Uh, I shared that I was uh, once uh, uh, an assessor in the Church of Scotland Selection School where people came to be uh, assessed in terms of their call. And uh, one thing I was wary of was uh, when people thought that the story of their woundedness uh, would make them a good pastor, would make them a good uh, minister. Uh, that can be the case, but it is not necessarily so. Let me share some thoughts on what it really means to be a, a wounded healer rather than simply somebody who is wounded. I think that uh, God needs to help us move from that place of being wounded to being a, a wounded healer. And I think the first sign that that's beginning to happen is that when our story of our wounds actually helps us to see the suffering of humanity. I think it was Charles Spurgeon who said that sorrow is a large family. and. Uh, I would say that's so, and I would say that suffering has a large family. I think one sign that we're beginning to pass from simply being wounded to being a wounded healer is that my pains have made me aware of the pains of others. So it's not so much that uh, I need to tell my story. I think that can be obtrusive. And I think that uh, sometimes when people talk about being a wounded healer, they mean that they will tell their story to other wounded people. There's times where that can be appropriate, but there's times when having to tell our story again and again can actually prove that we're using other people to still pursue our healing rather than helping them with theirs. Being a wounded healer means that my story makes me aware of the suffering of others. The second sign that I'm beginning to become a wounded healer is that God has taken my pains and he's converted them. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example from my own uh, uh, life experience. Uh, I carry wounds, as many of us do, and some of these wounds uh, came through ministry and so on. And uh, when we're wounded, we can easily go into a corner and become very isolated. One of the signs that God was beginning to turn these wounds from being simply woundedness into a source of healing for others was that somehow I became aware that woundedness was being converted. That isolation, along with the first lesson I've talked about today, realising the story of a suffering humanity, somehow isolation in that context was converted into something different. It was converted, it was turned around 180 degrees into being almost what I would call a hospitality. That my experience of being wounded, my experience of that at first pushing me into isolation and privacy, actually was converted by the Spirit of God to become a place of hospitality. A place into which others could come and share their stories if they wanted to. And that happened not necessarily through me sharing my story. It was something just that the Spirit of God did. And I found that other ministers would come to me and begin to open up about some of their pains. Not because I'd shared mine, but because somehow God had done something in me 
and created in me a hospitality that they sensed was there, a space into which they could come <clears throat> and begin to unpack their things. Uh, I, I, as you know, I used to be a, a conference speaker and went to different countries and spoken conferences, leaders' treats, retreats and so on. And I think I've shared in a previous blog that uh, sometimes I would go to places and I felt very unwelcome because uh, no place of hospitality was really prepared for me. Uh, there was no cupboard space, there was no drawer space, there was no place for me to unpack the few belongings that I brought with me for the few days. I think hospitality makes space for people. And this is one of the signs of being a wounded healer, that somehow your story makes space for others. And you'll find that uh, once that conversion of your pains has happened and you're no longer just a wounded person, but a wounded healer, you'll find that people start to say to you, you know, I've never told anyone this before because they sense in you that place of hospitality where they can unpack things and begin to speak and begin to share about those things that have kept them in a place of isolation. And as they do that, the hope is too that they'll become wounded healers. And that circle of hospitality, that circle of space will increase uh, for yet more to enter. So a couple of signs to help you know whether you're just wounded or a wounded healer. Uh, number one, are you aware of the suffering of others around you or are you still locked in your own suffering? And number two, has God begun to convert your wounds and taken what put you into a place of isolation and privacy and hiddenness? <clears throat> to somehow convert all of that, uh, to make you uh, and, uh, and the atmosphere around you a place of hospitality and a place of welcome. I'll maybe say a wee bit more about that in days to come. God bless for now.